Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back with a brand new review for Ready to Love Season 9, Episode 11. If you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail. If you're back for a second or third time, then welcome back. Y'all, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share with a friend. Hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time I upload a video. Now, child, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. When the episode first opens up, the ladies meet in the ladies' lounge. Let me just say this. All of y'all look good, okay? Every last one of y'all look all to the good. Y'all look so pretty. I was like, okay, girl, son, show them how Texas does it. And I don't know about these men, but uh, the women are given the judge that should be given. So it's almost time to wrap it up. These ladies are the final four. Now, I'm a little bit shocked that these are the final four women left, but here we are. Tommy tells them that they will be introducing the men to their family. How many times can we go between the families and the friends and the friends and the family and the family and the friends? Let's do it like they do at an old Baptist church. Bring all your family and friends to the Sunday service. <laughs> So we can get this wrapped up. Honey, bring everybody all at once. Let's get this over with now, Tommy. In the next scene, Mika invited Justin to meet her daddy. Mika dad looked like an old school smooth player, don't he? Look just like he on play. You better not mess with Mika, honey, because he ain't playing with you. Him and Justin got the same kind of hair. I said, okay, hair. <laughs> okay, y'all matching with the hair and whatnot. Daddy jumped right in. How many girlfriends you got? I know that's right, honey, because you got to ask him in the great state of Texas. Okay, how many girlfriends got you? But see, you can ask and then you could be like, OK, well, I don't have any girlfriends. But how many people think that you're their boyfriend? You got to reverse it because some people be playing with semantics and acting like they don't know no better. I'm not saying that that's Justin. I'm just saying you got to ask the burning questions. He said none. And daddy said, you know, pretty guys play too much. Y'all get on my nerves. Y'all be playing too much. He wanted to know what his intentions were with Mika. He said, well, you know, I've been single for four or five years and I just want to see where it goes. So then Mika brings up her reservations with him, you know, transitioning from single to being a part of her and her children's life. Now, he wants to take things slow so that he doesn't miss any red flags. And I feel like that's good. That's very true. Slow and steady wins the race. Because, baby, like the saying goes, only fools rush in. You need to take your time and you don't want to rush him into anything anyway, especially when you have children involved. Slow down, low down. Let him do whatever it is he going to do. Now, I'm still not sold on Justin not wanting kids. I feel like he sees Mika. Mika is stacked. Mika is a baddie. And Justin wants to, you know, he wants to play a little bit. I am hoping that he's serious because she's really invested in him. So then Justin tells her dad that, you know, he meets party girls or whatever. But Mika likes to be in the house. She's so sweet. She's nurturing. And she puts his mind at ease. So daddy said, well, you know, that's good to hear. And, you know, I love my girl. So as long as you treat her right. That's all that matters. Now, Justin leaves. Now, the daddy did like Justin, but he was still keeping his good eye on him as he should. His biggest concern is Mika being treated right. I mean, he's thinking about Justin being single for so long and that he's really thinking, is he ready to be in a relationship? Now, I have to say this. I'm liking Justin and Mika together, but I don't think that they're fully on the same page. I think she wants more than he wants. Moving forward. Over on the other side, child, Chaz is going to meet Vanessa and her sister. I would not be inviting him nowhere with me. He is not serious. Uh, Vanessa, you need to go ahead and self-eliminate. So Vanessa's sister is there and she's asking Chaz, like, what do you do for fun? Like, what's your social life like? He says, well, you know, I'd be on the inside, you know, because I have a dog and I just be on the inside. So Vanessa is not a dog person. The sister was like, girl, a dog? I thought you didn't do animals. She said it's not that she doesn't like animals, but baby, all she can take care of is her kids. Okay, she ain't got time to be picking up the pooper scooper. She ain't got no time. So then he tells her that he has a connection with not only Vanessa, but he's had a connection with 11 women. Baby, you got so many damn connections, you didn't even add an extra one, honey. It was only 10. <laughs> it was only 10. What are you talking about? Chance is telling the production, I can't keep up with all these ladies. It was definitely 11. Wait a minute. Divide by two, carry the one. There were only 10. That's it. That's all. 10. And Chaz is a joke. So her sister is trying to get down to the nitty gritty and she wasn't playing with him. And I like that sister. Vanessa's sister is the MVP of this episode because she wants to know where Vanessa fits in. He's talking about, I feel very deeply for Vanessa. And what exactly does that mean? And the sister asks the same question. What does it mean? 
He said, well, you know, I told her. Vanessa said, I want to be loved out loud. Like, I, I don't really understand if you like me or not. Girl, he is hiding you out in the open. Let his ass go. He says that he treats her differently than everybody else. Vanessa said, well, you know, I just want to get this straight. I do know about the other connections. I just want to know where I stand. You want to know, are you number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or the imaginary number 11? And her sister wants to know, why isn't Vanessa your only connection at this point? He said, no, she is. But wait a minute. No, I have a new connection, but it's just all so overwhelming. Sir, you did this to yourself. You could have let Patrice know, ma'am, it's too late to form a bond. Go dad away. You could have told her. Now, you didn't have to say it as rough as I just did, but you could have let Patrice know this is not going to be anything. I think you're nice. I didn't save your number. I'm just not that into you. And at this point, I'm trying to figure out who is around for Chaz. Amika is on her merry way. Rashina, she eliminated herself. Vanessa, I don't even know why you wasting time, girl. Like, I don't know. I guess you're just hanging on to be on the show. And then you have Patrice and I don't know what she doing. So her sister feels like, you know, Chaz is cool and all, but he's manipulative and he might be telling all the women the same damn thing. Sister, are you me or am I you? Because initially upon meeting Chaz, when he came to that mansion, I said, not he just told him same, the same thing. And then he was sitting around talking about, I like natural women. I like women that do this. I like women that do that and went the opposite way. Chaz is nothing but a liar. Okay. You a real one, sister. And then y'all were outside at the car with it. That was so real to me. You know how you talk to somebody and then you walk out to the car with them and then y'all talking about a car. That scene was so real and relatable for me. Uh, Vanessa, listen to your sister, honey. Listen to her. He's considering Patrice, but never even saved her number at first. Chaz, get real. You're not ready to love and you ain't ready to love nobody here. I don't know if you're ready to love out in the real world, but here, absolutely not. Vanessa, Chaz is not feeling you the way that you're feeling him. Release him back to the streets from whence he came moving forward in the next scene patrice is meeting with her brother to introduce alonzo to her brother and chaz is meeting the brother and the mother i said girl not chaz meeting both of them she another one playing games alonzo been down for you girl he been down for you like four flat tires he loved it is he love how you give it up <laughs> i'm sorry y'all oh honey i can't let that go he has been down for you like, I don't understand. And then Chaz even got the nice sit down dinner, y'all. Shirt all tucked in. I said, baby, not him sitting down at the dinner with the linen on the table. Meanwhile, Alonzo is over at the sports bar and grill. I said, ain't this nothing? So as he's sitting there, her brother is asking, like, what kind of relationship are you looking for long term? Just, you know, just a kick in. What are you doing? Alonzo said he wants something long term. So then he asked, well, you know what? When y'all get together... Are you going to stay in a house or an apartment? Well, I would hope they stay in a house because she has kids. So how they go out and fit up in that apartment? Alonzo up there playing, talking about, let's get a house. Let's just see what, let, let, let's just see what a house going to do. Let's just get a house. That would annoy me. Now, Alonzo, as much as you are growing on me, that would get on my central nervous system because you're meeting my people. I don't have time to play like that. And I don't want you embarrassing me. Act like you got some damn sense. Act like you've been somewhere before. That's why you down to the sports bar and grill. That brother was not feeling all that playing. He said, you're being goofy. <laughs> Listen, I don't know if y'all have ever watched Growing Up Hip Hop. Why does Patrice's brother remind me of Egypt's brother? Now, if y'all have never seen Growing Up Hip Hop, he reminds me so much of him and he's always doing like those martial arts and all that kind of stuff and then when he said he does mma i was like he reminds me so much of egypt's brother now egypt is peppa half of salt and pepper that's her daughter and that's her son and their siblings and he reminds me so much of him anyway that's neither here nor there that's just a side note back over at the nice sit down dinner her mom is asking Chaz if he's wealthy. Do you know what wealthy is? Let me tell you something. It's a difference between making a salary and being able to take care of your responsibilities, being well off, being rich, and being wealthy. Wealth to me seems like it's the epitome. So when she asked if he was wealthy, I was like, because of that house? Baby, that's a regular schmegula everyday house up here in H-Town. Or maybe that's just me. Now, he did say yes. He made some investments. He started a business. 
whatever he's saying she wants to know how he acquired said wealth baby they done saw chad's house and they think he got money girl he got money <laughs> child please her brother wants to know what is he going to do to keep patrice to keep her baby he barely even wanted to get to know her according to what we've been shown now i don't know how, to, how they're editing the show or whatever but i'm just gonna go strictly based on what i see on camera i'm not digging for these people i'm not going to no facebook groups i'm not doing none of that whatever i see on this screen is what we're going to discuss here on a friday night and according to this show keep her he ain't never wanna but that's just me moving forward so then chaz comes out of his rabbit mouth telling them that he has another connection but the reason why he really likes Patrice is because she saw him in a vulnerable state and she didn't judge him, but she understood him. And Vanessa judged him and he's never prayed with Vanessa. That's something else. I was like, wow, really, Chaz? This narrative that you're painting is unfair to Vanessa. That's not cool. The fact that you dogged her out in front of Patrice's family, that's an automatic never speak to you again. No, I'm just saying, and y'all can act like, well, it's not that harsh. He was just saying he didn't dog her out. Baby, you done dogged me out in front of this woman's mama. I don't, why are you even discussing me? All you had to say is I have another connection, but this is a lot different from that connection. That's it. Why would you throw her under the bus to make Patrice feel good when you didn't even want her damn number? You didn't even save her number. Back with Alonzo, I don't think Emmanuel, which is patrice's brother i don't think he was feeling alonzo alonzo was telling him because he asked about his family life and he was saying that he had a stepdad and he was telling this story about how one time he called his stepdad dad and he kind of shot him down and told him don't ever call him that again and i felt so bad for alonzo because i could tell that he was kind of getting choked up when he was telling the story so he quickly changed the subject and i think alonzo playing all day is a defense mechanism and i can relate to that because sometimes when I'm uncomfortable, you know, I make a joke or if I'm feeling uneasy, I might kick a little bit. I understand that. I feel like he doesn't like to speak about serious things because it makes him remember certain things. But as you get older, you have to learn to compartmentalize all that stuff and get yourself some therapy so that you can be a grown up. OK, because she gonna want a grown up man. She has grown up responsibilities. The children being number one back at the nice sit down dinner the mama asked how his childhood was Chaz right he said well my parents were married for 47 years I have brothers but you know I'm not really that close to them so they're like okay did y'all fall out he said no you know we just grew up and created our own lives mm-hmm sure you did Patrice was like listen I'm very close to my brothers now they like Chaz but they were not really feeling that he's not close to his family I want to hear from the brothers because I'm out to say anything. Please let me hear from the brothers. Brothers, speak up. How are things going? I don't see anything between Patrice and Chaz. I'm just not seeing it. I don't really see anything between Alonzo and Patrice. It's just not there. Nobody has anything. There's not a spark. It's just not given. Moving forward. In a confessional, Chaz talking about, yeah, I got soul food vibes from Patrice's family, but not from Vanessa's. That's because Vanessa's sister saw straight through you y'all see each other that's why now all of a sudden well i didn't get a get yeah you didn't get anything from her sister because she knows that you are playing in vanessa's face but her mama did really like him child she probably liked that house over on the other side laron is meeting with maya now y'all listen to this so she is telling us that she went out right her and laron went out she saw a friend from back in the day and she spoke to him and so laron started calling her all kinds of bees telling her f her hell no absolutely not i would never have spoken to him again his level of disrespect will be this way going forward now i know you don't think it's a big deal but it is so as she's sitting there waiting for whatever reason to introduce laron to anybody that she knows i wouldn't even let him out in the general public let alone around my people so her mom called and was like hello hey mom yeah i'm not gonna be able to make it she was like are you okay yeah i'm fine i just got a lot of stuff to do i know that's right honey mama did right there's no reason to come meet this loser even though this looked staged i was like child what in the setup by production is happening here <laughs> so the mom is not coming laron shows up skinning and grinning sir what's funny huh why are you smiling he sits down she tells him 
well, my mom's not going to come. So we're going to have to reschedule. She's going to take a rain check. She said, but I'm gonna go ahead and ask you some questions that my mom would. She said, um, do you feel like you're possessive? He said, well, I mean, I can get jealous and my mouth does get reckless. That's the same thing that you did with Koshia, except you didn't call her out of her name. But had Chaz not stepped in and she started crying, you probably would have. This seems to be your MO. So she's telling him that she has an issue with that because of her past relationships. They would talk to her, you know, disrespectfully, and she is not down for that. He said, well, I don't get angry quick. So the producers are asking him, why did Maya think you called her a B? He said, because I did. He said, because I did. Why are you laughing? Because they ain't funny. Nothing is funny. I'm not sure why you're laughing about disrespecting a woman that you're trying to get to know. You did all of that and got William sent home and he probably would have been genuine to Maya. And here you are skinning and grinning laughing about calling her a female dog he said you know I, she was all hugged up with a dude and she not gonna embarrass me you're embarrassing yourself you are an embarrassment he is one of those men those corner store gas station dudes he get mad and start calling you out your name when you reject him no i'm good well b you wasn't even that fine anyway f you did b it's giving corner store okay it's giving corner store Corey. it's giving gas station gill like you seem like you be hanging out at the gas station, getting ready to cuss somebody out as soon as they say no. And she was like, I was just speaking to him. This is what she said in the confessional. I was not even like doing anything wrong. I was just speaking. So if he can't handle me talking to people, then he can't handle me. Then she tells him, well, I don't like aggressive language. Like I've been in relationships and my family has seen me in relationships that were abusive. I don't like when people speak to me like that. Maya, I'm going to say this. Laurent is verbally abusive and the fact that he laughed and smiled about it makes him even more of a loser in a trash can. Now, he apologized to her, but she is not feeling it. Okay, so these men are getting progressively worse. Tommy, I'm going to need you to address this man child calling Maya out of her damn name. I'm going to need you to address this. Okay, because I feel like this is just what he does. He's always saying F you to somebody. It's quite disgusting. So she told him she's not a big fan on just his words. Girl, I wouldn't even be sitting here with him. How are you speaking to me that way because I spoke to another man? That is embarrassing. You're a childish, insecure little man child. Girl, don't spend another second with this person. He can go to hell respectfully. And she's talking about, well, I mean, if you do it a second time, Maya, 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 let me help you. There will be a second time, a third time, a fourth time from experience. I'm telling you. I'm trying to save you from the heartache that I went through because see, I just brushed it under the rug and pretended like he didn't do it. And it got progressively worse. Once they get to cussing and calling you out your name, that's your cue to exit. Moving forward. In the next scene, Justin and Maya are going on a date. All right, now Justin, you just ran in here, didn't even hug the woman. I said, sir, are you hungry? <laughs> what is happening? So they're talking and she's telling him that he's her only connection because he was like oh i seen you over there with leron and this person and that person you know he was just being funny but then she brings up them not talking for four to six hours well i mean he does work right and he's a pe teacher and baby he be busy with them cheering pe is something else you really got to be involved now he did say in the confessional that he needs a healthy amount of space now I can relate to that, but going a whole day in no contact, that's a no for me, big dog. And if you need a healthy amount of space, then you might not want to get into a relationship. I don't think he's quite ready to give up his bed with nobody else in it. He want to do a little drive by and go back to the house. I'm not sure Justin is quite ready to stop being single, Justin. He said, well, you know, six to eight months, I'm gonna know what you need and I'm gonna know your expectations. And so I'm gonna change that. I feel like sometimes Justin just be talking. I don't think he's a bad guy, but I also think sometimes he's full of fluff. Justin and Mika just came out of nowhere, but I'm feeling like she likes him a little more than he likes her. And that's a problem. She needs to slow it down just a little bit. Pump your brakes just a little bit. Let him work for it. Moving forward. Speaking of working for it, child, Vanessa is meeting Chaz to waste more of her time. After the way he spoke about her, it would be an automatic no for me. Now, she doesn't know that he spoke about her like that, but I do. So I'm looking at this like, ew. So they're on this day talking. Chaz is trying to make small talk. So he's asking her, you know, what did your sister think of me? And she told him that her sister said that he was manipulative and she feels that Vanessa feels more for him than he does for her. I'm manipulative? Yes, you. 
Yes, you. We're talking to you. He said, nah, that's BS. Because you know what? When I buy them one bouquet, I buy you two. I worship you when I enter your temple. Ugh, this is nauseating. Do you hear me? Oh my God. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, child, I can just throw up. The fact that Chaz is sitting here spewing out this BS and Vanessa is listening to it. Y'all got to be acting. Y'all got to be acting. Chaz, you are not an honest or a good guy. You little rat fink. Like something is really wrong with you. This is crazy. He said, I know you see it. I know you see it. <laughs> oh, child, does she? Mm-mm-mm. Then he want to hold hands under the table. Ew, uh, no, Vanessa. He's still hiding you, girl. Now he's hiding your hands. Everything has a meaning to it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I cannot believe that Vanessa fell for this mess. He said all that. Then he got in the confessional, y'all, and still turned around and said, you know, I'm just not sure about Vanessa. What is this trash season? What is this? What is this? Okay. Now, last season, you know, we were like, oh, my gosh, what is this? But this season... This is at an all time low. And Chaz, I hate to break it to you, but you are absolutely manipulative and corny. Please go away from me with this. Over on the other side, Patrice and Alonzo are going to do a country line dance class. I love a dancing cowboy. Baby, when they get into it, y'all ever seen them at the trail rides? If you from Texas, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But baby, you got to watch them because they be talking to everybody at that trail ride. Honey. They can't be trusted. Anywho, that's a story time for another day. She said her family is leaning toward Chaz. That liar? Okay, good luck, Chuck. Now, I can say that Alonzo and Patrice, they have had the best dates this season. They always do something fun. They always are having a real date. These other things, honey, I don't know what they're doing. So after they get through, you know, dancing and whatnot, they sit down and they talk. Alonzo tells her he felt left out at the getaway when she was running up behind Chaz crying, even though he made his own bed and he had to lie in it. He was like, I felt like chopped liver. She said, no, no, I saw a grown man cry and I felt like he needed me and it's in my nature to nurture people. I would do the same thing for you. Patrice, go ahead and let Alonzo go because you do not like this man and you don't take him seriously. You and Chaz may be good together because both y'all like saying any old thing. She wants to nurture a man that's crying because he has to make a decision between women. Yeah, okay, at 47 years old. Girl, you just wanted to show him that you would be there for him. So he chose you. Girl gone. So she's telling him that she wants attention. So every now and again, she may throw a tantrum just so he can come to her and they can work it out. I can tell Patrice seeks attention. Moving forward. In the next scene, the ladies meet with Tommy again. Now it's the final lounge. Tommy is asking about how the families received the men. Mika said her dad really liked Justin and they may go fishing together. But he needs to make sure that he communicates with her so that they're on the same page. Patrice is like, yeah, I'm just stuck in between two. Torn in between the two. Okay, Latoya, look it. She says she's torn in between the two. Alonzo gives her butterflies, but he may not be ready to love. Chaz doesn't give her butterflies, but she cannot live on butterflies alone. But he does have a plan. Now, the brother was worried about the relationship with his brothers, but the mom was smitten as soon as Chaz walked in. Chaz got all y'all fooled. And baby, I can't believe that mama sitting up there acting like that, honey. Mm -mm, absolutely not. My mom would have saw straight through Chaz. She would have been like, girl, he can't be trusted. Don't be no fool. <laughs> the women in my family love to say that. Don't be no fool. And I would have just been like, you know what? Mm -mm, I ain't going to be able to do it. Vanessa said her sister felt like he was very calculated. And when she was trying to find out how he felt about Vanessa... It was like pulling teeth to get him to say it. Oh, well, baby, that's your answer right there. That should be enough for you to walk away. When a man likes you, you will know it. It will almost be annoying. Like, okay, sir, I got it. I got it. You like me. Got it. Don't call me. I'll call you. <laughs> I'll have my people call your people. She says she loves his communication and she wants to find out what's genuine. Nothing. The only thing that's genuine is that house. That's it. That's all. Patrice said, well, you know, I'm just not sure about their connection. I don't know what they got going on, but I'm not concerned about it either. Because what's due to me is going to come to me. Patrice, please hush. So then Maya tells them that her mom was too busy to show up. And Tommy was like, you should have called me. Tommy, no. Okay. Because you weren't going to get down to the bottom of it either. But then she starts telling them about how Laron seems possessive and jealous and he speaks to her in a way that's just not nice. So Tommy said, I want to know, what did he say? 
She goes, I mean, he cusses a lot. Maybe it's because he's from up north and I'm from Mississippi. No, ma'am. Tell Tommy that he called you a bia bia. Please tell Tommy that he called you out your name. And he said, F you. Tell him. Like, why are you making excuses for him? He's from up north. I know plenty of people from up north and none of them have just come out of the side of their face and called me a B because I spoke to somebody else. He has a real issue with that. It was shown when he did that with Koshia. You know, it's not right and you don't deserve that. She said, well, I told him that I didn't like that. And he told me that he wouldn't do it again. Mm. Tommy tells them, well, you got some tough choices and decisions to make. Maya, why didn't you tell Tommy the truth? I was so annoyed with that girl. Why didn't you tell him what it really was? Tommy tells them they're invited to this barbecue and they need to each figure out what they're going to do with these men. Patrice talking about, I'm in a real life love triangle. Ma'am, no, you are not. You have one man that actually likes you and one man that is only talking to you because you deboed your way in. And he knows that he can get one over on you and you won't ask too many questions because you want to be picked. And that was the end of the episode. Nobody, and I do mean nobody, needs to get together. And every week it shocks me how much Alonzo is the most decent person left. I have never seen such a thing. I just knew he was going to get on my nerves to the bitter end. And he turned it right on around. Child, this is crazy. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you think about Laron calling Maya out of her name. What do you think about her not saying anything to Tommy? What do y'all think about that? What do you think about Chaz playing in Vanessa's face and then turns right around and gets in the confessional and says, I can't choose. I really can't. Vanessa's just not, I, I can't choose. And then he talked bad about Vanessa in front of Patrice's family. Now for me, if I were a part of her family, I would automatically tell her that's not a man you want to continue with because if he will bad mouth her in front of us, what will he say about you in front of them? Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.